Hi, welcome back to our story time with the wear puppy. It's time for chapter four. Please, Mum, Mickey begged. I can't go in there. Mum wouldn't listen. She made Mickey get out of the car. She knocked on the front door of the dog's home. The howling increased. And then there was a lot of barking too. Mickey clung to Mum's arm and even Marigold took a step backwards. The door opened and a young freckled woman in jeans stood there smiling, surrounded by two barking Labradors, the colour of clotted cream. Clotted cream is my favourite. And a small black Scotty who kept diving through the Labrador's legs. Quiet, you silly dogs, the woman shouted. She saw Mickey shrinking away and said quickly, it was okay, they're all very friendly. They won't bite, there's no need to be frightened of them. I'm not frightened, said Marigold, squatting down to pet the Scotty, while the two Labradors sniffed and nuzzled. Aren't they lovely? What are their names? Shall we have the little Scotty dog? Although I do like the big creamy dogs too. Oh, look, this one's smiling at me. That's Tumble, and that's her brother Ruff. Oh, great, we're a sister and a brother, and we can have a sister and a brother dog. Oh no, I'm afraid Ruff and Tumble are my dogs, and we Deanie here too. But there are plenty of other dogs to look at out the back. I've got lots of strays at the moment, come through to the kennels. I'll wait outside, Mickey said, trying to dodge Ruff and Tumble's big wet licks. Don't be silly, Mickey. This is going to be your dog. You've got to choose. I'll choose for him, said Marigold, still playing with Jeanie. She rolled over and let Marigold tickle her tummy. There, look, she loves being tickled, doesn't she? It's my magic trick of taming all dogs. Maybe I'll be a dog trainer in a circus. I think it's a trick that only works with little friendly dogs like Jeannie, said Miss Webb. You shouldn't even touch some of the big dogs I've got, just in case. I'm not scared of any dogs, even really big ones, said Marigold. Not like my brother, he's scared, he's scared and he'd be older than me. No, I'm not scared, Mickey said hoarsely, but at, the t at the, that moment, Jeannie nudged against his leg and he gave a little yelp of terror. See, said Marigold triumphantly, he's even scared of a little Scotty dog. He's hopeless, isn't he? I don't know why Mum wants him to get a dog. It's just daft, isn't it? She ought to get me a dog, seeing as I'm the only one who likes them. And dogs don't need a special stable, do they? They just need a little kennel. Or even an old cardboard box, said Miss Webb. I've got the special big kennels at the back of my house because I always have so many stray dogs on my hands. She turned back to Mickey. But it's okay. They're all in separate pens and they can't get out. He'll still be scared, said Marigold. He's even scared of me. She suddenly darted at Mickey going woof, woof, woof. And poor Mickey was so stung, strung up and startled by this that he jumped and very nearly burst into tears. Marigold, said Mum, but she gave Mickey a little shake too, I think she was a bit embarrassed. Marigold just laughed and Miss Webb was trying hard to keep a straight face. Mickey blinked desperately and swallowed the lump in his throat. His face was scarlet, his whole body burning. How do you think he's feeling? I think he's probably quite scared and a bit sad, probably on the brink of tears. We've got some lovely puppies out the back, said Miss Webb. They're really sweet and cuddly. I'd go for a puppy if I were you. Mickey's throat ached so much he could barely speak. I don't really want a dog, not even a puppy, thank you, he croaked. Just take a look, Mickey, said Mum, giving him a little push. So Mickey had to go with them to the kennels at the back of the house. The howling got louder. It had a strange, eerie edge to it. Marigold put her hands over her ears. Oh, which one's making that horrid noise? She complained. Oh, sorry, that's a stray we picked up last night. He's been making that racket ever since, even though we've done our best to comfort him. He's only a puppy, but he's a vicious little thing all the same. I certainly wouldn't recommend him for a family pet, especially as the little boy's so nervous. I bet I could tame him, said Marigold. She approached the pen in the corner where a big grey puppy st stood tensely, head back, howling horribly. Nice doggy, said Marigold, and the puppy quivered and then stopped mid-howl. 
See that, said Marigold. There, I've stopped him. He's coming over to see me. Here, boy, you like me, don't you? Do you want to be my doggy? You can't be Mickey's doggy because he's such a silly wimp. Mickey couldn't stand the word wimp. It sounded so horrible and feeble and ugly and pimply. Don't call Mickey silly names, said Mum. Well, it's true. Dad says I should have been his boy because I've got all the spark while Mickey's just being silly. Mickey burned all over. He shut his eyes, his whole skin prickling, itching unbearably. He could still hear the howling, but now it seemed to be right inside his own head. He ground his teeth and then suddenly Marigold screamed. Mickey opened his eyes. He stared at his shrieking sister. The grey puppy had a fierce grip of her finger and was biting hard with his teeth. Get off me! Help! Help! Mum, help! Marigold yelled. A very naughty grin came on Mickey's face, almost as if he was biting too. Then he shook his head and Mar Marigold managed to snatch her finger away from the savage little pup. Bad boy, said Miss Webb to the excited puppy. I'm sorry he went for you, dear. Mind you, I did try to warn you. You mustn't ever take silly risks with stray dogs. Let's have a look at the finger and see what damage has been done. It's bleeding, said Marigold. Come on now, lovey, it's only a little scratch. Still, it's better not to take any risks. We'll give you a dab of disinfectant and find you a bandage, said Miss Webb. She led the wailing Marigold back into the house. Mum followed, looking a little bit agitated. Mickey didn't follow. He stayed where he was, out by the dog pens. He took no notice of all the ordinary dogs obedient to their pens. He didn't even give the cute Labrador puppy snuggled in their basket a second glance. He only had eyes for the strange grey puppy that had bitten Marigold. It ran towards Mickey. Mickey didn't back away. He didn't feel so scared. And the puppy seemed to have perked up too. He didn't howl anymore. He just made friendly little snuffling noises. You just bit my sister, Mickey whispered to the dog. The puppy coughed several times. It sounded as if it was chuckling. Mickey started to giggle. That was bad, Mickey spluttered, his hand over his mouth so they wouldn't hear back in the house. But we don't care, do we? The puppy shook his head. He came right up against the bars of the pen, sticking out his soft, pointed snout. His amber eyes were wide and trusting now. Are you trying to make friends? Mickey asked. The puppy snuffled. Hello, puppy, Mickey said, and he reached through the bars to pat the puppy's head, though Marigold had just demonstrated that this was quite a dangerous thing to do. You're not going to bite me, are you? said Mickey. The puppy twitched his nose and blinked his eyes. Mickey very gently touched the coarse grey fur. His hand was shaking. The puppy quivered too, but stayed still. Mickey held his breath and started stroking the puppy very gently. The puppy pressed up even closer in spite of the bars in the way. His pink tongue came out and he licked Mickey's bare knee. We're pals, right? Mickey whispered. The puppy licked several times. Hey, I'm not a lollipop, Mickey giggled, wiping at his slobbery knee. The puppy licked harder, sharing the joke. He managed to get one paw through the bars and he held it out to Mickey. Mickey shook the little hard paw. How do you do, said Mickey. I'm Mickey and that silly little girl you bit was my little sister Marigold. The puppy grinned wolfishly. You didn't half go for her, didn't you, said Mickey, and they had another giggle together. The puppy giving little barks of glee. Mickey, get away from that dog, Mum suddenly cried, rushing out of the back of the house. How can you be so silly? Look what he did to Marigold. He won't bite me, said Mickey calmly. Do as your mum says, says Miss Webb, returning with Marigold. She was still blotched with tears and she held out her bandaged finger high in the air to show it off. That puppy is too in unpredictable. I don't know what to do with him. I'll take him as my pet, said Mickey. And the puppy stiffened and then licked him. Don't be silly, Mickey, said Mum. I'm not being silly, Mum. I want this dog, said Mickey. No, Marigold protested. We're not having that horrible dog. It bites. My finger hurts. My, I might have to go to the hospital. Marigold, I told you it's only a scratch, said Mum. Now, Mickey, leave that bad puppy alone and come and look at some of the other dogs. No, Mum, I want this one. Please, I must have this puppy. 
What about these other puppies over here? They're half Labradors and they're very gentle. Look at that little um, one with the big eyes. He'd make a much better pet. See, he's much prettier than that puppy there. I don't mind him not being pretty. I like the way he looks, said Mickey. And he had both arms through the bars now, holding the puppy tight. Mickey, will you just let go of him, Mum said. You really are the strangest boy. One minute you're scared, and then you're hugging a dog. What is it anyway? Is it an Alsatian? It's certainly mostly German Shepherd, but it's got something else in it. Something very odd, said Miss Webb. I know, said Mickey, nodding, and I want him so bad. Mum, please, please, Mum. No, he's not to have him, Mum. He'll bite me again, said Marigold. Mum dithered between the two of them. Mickey looked up at her, his big brown eyes glinting amber in the sunlight. You said it was my turn to get a pet and that I had to choose him, and now I'm chosen, said Mickey. Mum sighed. All right, then. You can have that one if you really want. I just still think it's a silly choice. Mickey knew it was the only possible choice. He had the most magical special pet in the whole world. His very own werewolf. Well, not quite a wolf yet. A were puppy. And that is the end of the fourth chapter. I hope you're enjoying the were puppy. I'm enjoying it too. We have three more chapters to go. I wonder what's going to happen.